Good morning, YouTube, and good morning, April. Oh, good morning. Do I satisfy you? Oh, of course you do. What? Well, um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know how to segue out of that. Um, basically, this list, April, is um, the 10 least uh, satisfying cars and SUVs, and I didn't know how to open it other than asking uh, how well I satisfy you in general. Do I satisfy you? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Stop. Yeah. Okay, yeah. the least satisfying cars, so, top 10. This is according to Consumer Reports, right. and this is uh, would you go on a ride with me? Again, like if you were able to do it all over Got again, it. would you want to on a Tyler Hoover? hop on and, and, and buy me, basically, <laughs> if I satisfied you? Right. I'm not fully bought yet, but soon, <laughs> I guess I've taken you for a test drive and I will, uh, I'll take it. Well, <laughs> this is car, uh, I, this is, I, this opening is interesting. Uh, these are cars where people are most likely not to rebuy, so it, it's based entirely on consumer satisfaction, whether they are likely to buy the car again. Right. Once they're ready to get a new vehicle. Well, it's and interesting because some... it's like, I feel like Consumer Reports is so serious and they're like cars that aren't satisfying. So I'm curious what's right. on the list. Yes, but they just base it on one question. Yes. Are you likely to buy this car again? Right. Would you buy it again? Got and it. these are the people that said no the most. And the least hated. Okay. Uh, the, the least most. satisfying, or the, the most satisfying, least satisfying car okay. is the 2024 Nissan Altima. There's so many of them, though. It's like so easy to right. buy and sell them. But they cater to bad credit. Okay. And so nobody goes in thinking, I want to buy a Nissan Altima. That's something I've always wanted. They go right. because they have to buy it because they get qualified for it or it's the best deal or whatever. Otherwise, they would buy an Accord or a Camry, right. obviously. Right, okay. And Consumer Reports actually does give pretty good marks on the Altima mm -hmm. overall for its road test, its projected reliability, and that CVT transmission. They still knock it, but Nissan won't give up. Uh, but the satisfaction is a one out of five. So. Yeah, it is 48% of people that buy an Altima say mm -hmm. they will buy another one. So Ooh. less than half. That's rough. And Packard, the old slogan was, ask the man who owns one, mm -hmm. which was their marketing slogan to say, our cars are so good. See someone driving one, ask him about it, and they'll tell you it's the best car ever. Right. Uh, not the case with a Nissan Altima. 48%, so 52% would say, don't buy this piece of crap. Right. And maybe that's why they treat them so badly, and they're also beat up and driven like crazy people. They're hoping to crash them or blow them up so they can get something else. And then their consumer ratings on the Ultima. Lows are agility and ease of entry. Okay. Highs, controls, and fuel economy. Hmm. But overall, good marks on it. Road test, projected reliability. Uh, still pretty bad because of the CVT. But April, before we get to the next car, yes. I want to search for my most satisfying car on Auto oh. Tempest. The best place to search for a used car online. And thanks to Auto Tempest for sponsoring this video. And good morning, YouTube. Yeah. What is my most satisfying car? Well, obviously, I think it goes without saying. Everyone mm -hmm. knows. Mm -hmm. The Cadillac Majestic. Escalade. Very much mm -hmm. uh, the second generation, 2002 to 2006. And Auto Tempest will find plenty for me, I am sure. What do we have? Yes. It's probably already in your search Starting history. at $49.99 with 256,000 miles. And it's actually here in Wichita, Kansas. Okay, this is going to get dangerous. How about that? <laughs> Most expensive, you. it looks like, eleven nine ninety nine with 155,000 miles. Mm. So they're holding their value. They've been the same <laughs> value for pretty much the last 10, 15 years, ever since I started buying them used. It's kind so of strange. Can you put in, like, Platinum Edition, oh, yes. And that was all I'll pop up. You could type it in as a keyword, Platinum Edition, mm -hmm. most certainly. Any color you want. And they actually made some rear wheel drive versions. Mm -hmm. So most were all wheel drive, but you can search by that as well. Just like on all the big sites where you can differentiate two very narrow parameters, Auto Tempest does the same thing, except it populates all the major listing sites in one search. So the selection here is juicy. But, uh, Let's go back to the hoopties, to the very unsatisfying cars, unlike the Escalade. Yeah, okay. okay, next on the list is the Volkswagen Jetta. What happened? 47% of people say they would buy a Jetta again. I feel like Jetta owners are like so proud to be Jetta owners that they repurchase them because it's just so cool. You're part of this exclusive club because you have a Jetta. Yeah. Well, they're, once again, one out of five in consumer satisfaction. Their reliability projector is very low on this, 25% yeah. out of 100, so half that of the Altima. That's rough. But they think it drives great. Mm -hmm. The only lows they knocked it was the low dash vents. They're too low. Okay, that's a random weird thing to call out. 
but you can kind of understand why people don't want to buy them again if their reliability is so terrible. Yeah. So that's number nine. That is number nine. Number eight is the Kia Forte. Ooh, what's wrong with the Forte? I don't know, but only 47% of people say they would buy it again. Hmm. And uh, you can see the lows are pretty bad. I guess the ride is terrible. The noise, like cockpit noise yeah. is bad. Seat comfort, terrible. And fit and finish. Yeah. But pretty high reliability marks and road test marks. I mean, seat comfort and noise, I feel like, are a big deal. If it's extra loud, if they don't have any soundproofing and anything like that, then it's going to be annoying. Are you ready for this one? Yes. It's kind of a surprise. Yes. The Mercedes C-Class, 46% of people that own them would buy it again. What? That low. Mercedes? Yeah. On the list? I know. What is going on here? I know. Um, they said wow. the lows are the stiff ride. The long stopping distances, which is huh. strange. Are these new? These are new. Okay. Yeah. And unintuitive controls. So all the crazy tech and infotainment, it's messing with people and they hate it and right. it's glitchy. And that's why the owner satisfaction is so low and the predicted reliability, the lowest yet, 19 out of 100 with consumer reports. Mm -hmm. I do feel like a lot of newer cars try to set their controls differently, you know, just to be different. And there's mm -hmm. no point. A lot of times, you know, when you're putting it in a drive and it's all of a sudden it's a, it's a knob or it's over here. And it's just like everyone wants to be different, like where to roll down the windows. Well, I see. I just said roll down the windows. Like I'm a million years old. But the window switches. Yes. They could be in the center. They could be up high. Like they're all over the place. So that one... I wouldn't want to purchase again. Right, so people are having issues with mm -hmm. Mercedes and they can't figure out how to work the thing. So they're not happy with it. But uh, we go back to Kia again, the Kia Seltos, which Kia, is a I... small crossover. It's cheap, priced $24,000. It's probably one of the cheapest crossovers out there. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, only 45% say they would buy that one again. Whoa, okay. Yeah. So that's number seven. The lows are the ride and the noise. Same complaints with the other Kia. Right. But I guess it's a little more comfortable. Uh, more reliable, though, than the Mercedes and some others. 51 out of 100, but very low consumer satisfaction. Next on the list, more familiar territory, Nissan again with the Kicks. They're a little crossover that starts at $21,000. Only 44% would buy that again. That's Look at the, look at the base price for it. It's mm -hmm. right around $20,000. Yeah. A great price. That's amazing. So lows include acceleration, fit and finish, front seat comfort, big deal, yeah. and agility. It's a $20,000 car, what do you expect? Well, they're expecting more. You can yeah. buy a RAV4, once okay. again, if you could qualify for it. The, right. the Honda HRV is another great one in this segment. Uh, Nissan Kicks is not. Low reliability score, 54. Low owner satisfaction score. Hmm. Next on the list is the Kia Sorento Hybrid, I assume because yeah. they're having so many issues with it. Starting at 31990 for a hybrid, that's pretty good, but only 42% would buy the Kia Sorento Hybrid again. There are three Kias on this list so far. Right. And we're barely halfway through it. Right. The lows include hesitation off the line. Interesting. Okay, for a new car, for a 2024 car? Yeah, on a hybrid you're supposed to have that instant kick of acceleration and the motor helping. So the electric and then the motor coming in. So if it's hesitating, yeah. that's going to be really annoying. I'm sure it's just glitchy as a new hybrid from Kia and they're trying to figure it out. So people are very angry, frustrated. Low reliability rating as usual with these and yeah, low, low consumer satisfaction rating. Still plenty more to go. Back to Nissan though. 39% on the Nissan Sentra okay. would buy it again. So that's very low. 60% saying, uh -uh, never again. Whoa, okay. And that's despite it being a pretty good car starting at $20,000 and lots of praise for the ride handling controls. Rear seat room, the lows include the front seat short on lower back support, which I guess if you get your back's in agony, you would not want another car like that. Yeah. Uh, foot operated parking brake, which who cares? That's all old cars had, right. but, uh, and headlight performance. So you can't see very well at night huh. with it. Well, I could see if that's a big deal, which obviously it is, if they were going to list that, and that's mm -hmm. a pretty serious thing then. Like, you'd be like my mom and put her high beams on all the time. Oh my gosh. Yes. I can't get her to stop. So predicted reliability is lower on this one, 42 out of 100. We were seeing most of them recently in around low 50. So, right. yeah, uh, not good, but it gets worse. The Volkswagen Taos. Ooh, that sounds really fancy. Small SUV. Volkswagen's been on here once before as well. Right. Uh, this one... 38% would buy this again. 
So they're having a very, very bad experience. Starts at $23,995. Yeah. That's a really low, great price. And uh, the big low is the uneven power delivery. I assume it's a two liter turbo or whatever right. they have. But its powertrain has serious hiccups that literally give us pause. That's what Consumer Reports said Got about it. it. Got it. Okay, well, that's a, that's a serious thing. And look at the reliability rating. Once again, the Volkswagen, <laughs> lowest of low, below Mercedes, 18 out of 100 this on so... how reliable they think these cars will be. This is so bad. But it's not the worst car. You ready for the worst one? So this is number nine. It's number nine. So we're getting to the final. Worst satisfying car on the road in 2024 is... The Infiniti QX50. Oh my gosh. Only 25% of people, this is a Nissan product, would buy it again. What? Really? Infiniti yeah. is topping this list? Infiniti is topping this list. They're fancy and luxurious, and then now they're number 10 on the Their lows side. are confusing controls and short on agility. But there's really nothing that makes you think, what's so bad about this? Uh, as far as consumer reports go. The reliability is not terrible, predicted 49 out of 100, mm -hmm. but something must be going on with these. Well, I feel like you have a different expectation with Infiniti because the price point's a little higher. So you expect a yes. little better out of what you're driving. Starts at $41,000. Right. This is not delivering, I guess. Mm. This is the most unsatisfying car on the road. Yeah. Well, let's see what they said on the road test. They said the, Inf the Infiniti QX50 comes with an innovative engine and a roomy, quiet, and well-furnished interior. But the engine doesn't provide the promised performance or fuel economy, so that's the big issue. Okay. And the controls are confusing to use, all of which combine to leave us underwhelmed. So they have this new innovative engine that doesn't deliver, mm -hmm. and it's infotainment's weird, so I guess nobody likes it. Hmm. Very unsatisfying. That's a shame. So Nissan, really bad. And Nissan yeah. and Infiniti are part of the same company. Right. Kia, holy Kia crap, that's terrible. Kia was shocking. And Volkswagen with two on the list. Right. Making lots of turds in mm. Korea. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I'm glad you're satisfied though <laughs> with this American built. So the Caucasian, Caucasian yeah. Hoover right here in Kansas. 170 pound soaking wet, well 160 honestly. <laughs> Good morning, YouTube, and good morning, April. Oh, good morning. It's Do you morning. satisfy me? Or sorry, wait, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, that's the wrong question. <laughs> All right, strong open. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry, I mixed it up. <laughs> Do I? <laughs> Never mind. I'll mix it up. <laughs> sorry.